rings a pair of you. So there will be spoilers. And the first one of them, the more you think about this show, the worse it gets. So Galadriel refuses Sauron's offer to join him. And the next thing she knows, she's underwater drowning in another vision scene. Back at the moment when Sauron saved her in the ocean, only this time he's not saving her. She's then fished out of the river by Elrond and she then almost stabs him. Is there anybody left in this series that she hasn't threatened to stab at this point? She thinks Elrond may be Sauron. He wins her over by telling her how they met. And the first thing Galadriel wants to know is where Celebrimbor is. And my question is, why? The audience knows the importance of the rings, but Galadriel doesn't. And this makes no sense whatsoever. Why was her first question not, where is Halbrand? Why did she not say, Elrond, where is Halbrand? I'm pretty sure I've been fooled and he's rarely Sauron. Because we find out at the end of the episode that Sauron seems to have walked all the way back to Mordor. Maybe he teleported. Maybe it's magic because it's all off camera again. But Sauron allegedly walked the 2200 kilometers back to Mordor. Oh, why do they keep on doing this to me? This series has no grasp of time and space. If Sauron managed a walking speed of four kilometers an hour and walked 24 hours a day, he'd maybe make it back to Mordor in about 23 days. In reality, he'd be walking for months. She didn't even ask what time it was when she woke up in the river. Sarah might have even not managed to leave yet. He may just have left. If you get on horses, you can probably catch him. Instead, Galadriel and Elrond go to Celebrimbor's tower and Elrond asks her, where is Halbrand? Galadriel says, he's gone and I doubt he'll return. He's gone? What do you mean he's gone? How do you know he's gone? You aren't even going to ask around and find out if anyone saw him leave. Sauron could still be there as far as you know. You could still catch him. He may have only just left. You even know what direction he's probably going in. Elrond asks her what happened by that stream and she doesn't tell him. She says he should trust her instead and it's this, isn't it? What will they do when you tell them that you are my ally? When you tell them that Sauron lives? Because of you! She's thinking of herself, isn't she? She's thinking what people will say about her when they know that she helped Sauron. How can the writers get the concept of heroism this wrong? The world is going to be plunged into 3,000 years of darkness and death because Galadriel cared more about her reputation than stopping Sauron. So she's not telling anyone. And she's not going after him. She's just going to stay in the tower and make some jewellery instead with a process that she already suspects is tainted. So what follows is a truly laughable scene on metallurgy written by people who have no idea what metallurgy is. They decide on making three rings, which is handy because they've had those three gems sat on the table all episode. They say three because one will corrupt, two will divide, but with three there is balance. Three is balance, huh? Then why were the elves going to make one crown earlier this episode? Celebrimbor says the purity of the lesser ores in the alloy is crucial. He needs gold and silver of the most exquisite quality and he needs to melt Galadriel's dagger to make the rings. He says that true creation requires sacrifice. So I guess earlier in the episode, the elves were just going to forge a plus one crown of corruption. And that dagger is clearly not an ore. An ore is a naturally occurring solid material from which a metal or minerals can be extracted. Ores are not pure. They're an unpurified metal bearing mineral or rock. Could you not have got a consultant for this part? Somebody that actually knew what the hell they were talking about. Didn't you even do the most scant research? And we just get deeper and deeper into the nonsense as Celebrimbor says that they need gold and silver of the purest quality. So they have to use Galadriel's dagger. But what precisely would make the gold and silver from the elves continent purer? Is it just magic again? And then they just take the whole dagger and throw it into a furnace and melt it. And it just so happens the dagger contains the perfect quantities required for the melt. 
they throw the whole thing in. So even the blade, which logically must be made of steel, right? You can't have the blade made of silver, surely. Silver's pretty soft. You wouldn't get very far making a blade out of pure silver. Maybe it's magic again. The blade has pearls in it. In what way is that pure? You seem to have pearls and steel in your mouth. You've got what looks like two litres of liquid metal from that one small dagger. So then they add the mithril and then they just throw in the unpurified ore. What? With bits of rock in it? What definition of pure are you using? Writers, you don't know what ore means, do you? For someone who has any knowledge of chemistry or metallurgy, this is painful to watch. And this gets so much worse when you realise that the forging of the rings in the Tolkien literature takes about a hundred years. They start in year 1500 of the Second Age. The three rings of the elves are made next in 1590, and the one ring is made by Sauron in 1600. The elven rings are supposed to be made last, so either the writers have butchered the source material again, or Sauron and the elves made the other 16 rings for the dwarves and men off camera, and at this stage I cannot rule out either of those possibilities. So the elves pour the alloy into moulds to make three blocks to make the rings out of, and how the hell did you get two gold rings and one silver ring from the same pot of molten metal? You could maybe get a golden exterior using acid to remove the other surface metals. For the silver, maybe the elves have electroplating. Maybe it's magic. Maybe it's complete effing nonsense. Meanwhile, Elrond finds the scroll that suggests Helbrand isn't a southern king after all, so he races to Galadriel. Does he know about Sauron? Then he finds her and they look at some rings and that's it for the storyline. If he confronts her, it's done off camera. Also in the story, the three witches are after Gandalf. They do appear to be evil, but there are three of them, so in reality they can't be evil, they must be balanced. Meanwhile, Gandalf is alone. So he must be corrupt. Galadriel told me so. They track down Gandalf and for no reason whatsoever one of them impersonates Nori Brandyfoot. In universe, why did she do that? The three of them could have just walked up to him. They did that so the writers could give the audience the information that one of them can shapeshift. The witches then hail Gandalf as Lord Sauron, a thing I didn't buy for a second. As the witches try to explain to Gandalf that he's rarely Sauron, he starts getting unruly. So they knock him out to transport him back to the eastern land of Rune. The Harfoots arrive and decide to try and rescue him. They take their eyes off of the women for a moment and one of them's gone. So they decide to make their move. Nori's mother distracts the remaining two witches by making bird calls while Nori and Sadok go to untie the restrained Gandalf. As they're untying him, Nori's mother finds the real Gandalf in a bush and the show reveals that Nori and Sadok are instead untying the leader of the witches. And again, in universe, why did the witches do this? They already had Gandalf restrained and unconscious. So they untie him and tie up their own leader in order to trap whoever is watching them. It makes no sense. On any level, it was done purely for the shock reveal. Sadok is then hit in the stomach with a throwing knife. There's then a big fight and Gandalf just banishes the witches as soon as he starts properly trying and delivers one of the worst lines in the entire series. So achingly and pathetically on the nose, why show something by actions when you can just have a character declare what their character traits are? Gandalf banishes the witches and says, He is not Sauron. He is the other. The Star. He is... I'm good. But my God, this show certainly wasn't. Sadok then dies of his stomach wound because nobody there has the wit to consider that maybe Gandalf should heal him. The Harfoots made Gandalf heal an apple tree for fuck's sake and you're just going to watch Sadok slowly bleed out. But to be fair, for the Harfoots, this behaviour is entirely consistent because the Harfoots are arseholes. Nobody 
Not one single one of them suggested that Gandalf should try to heal Sadok, including Sadok. They just sat and watched the sunset and quietly watched him bleed to death. And Nori and Gandalf go on a journey to Rune and have a goodbye scene with the rest of the Harfoots so tedious that it felt like the 90 years it should have taken to make the rings. Could you make a cup of tea please, Stephanie?